Hey, what's up everyone? Happy July 4th. Hopefully you all are enjoying this extended holiday weekend. You're able to spend time with friends, family. You are able to have some good food, get to see some fireworks. Ah, with whatever is going on this weekend, you got to be treating yourself to some ripping, right? I mean, come on. Now, I'm not, so I don't have any room to talk. I've been watching Diamond Princess, jumping in on her live streams, watching every now and then. She's on there for hours, many times a week. DP, how do you do it? Even when I don't leave a comment, I'll always go there. If I see it pop up, throw you a thumbs up and everything like that. So I don't know how you do it. Those hour live streams, or hours of live streams, I should say. So... What I decided to do since I'm not really ripping is I've been saving up for a few weeks. I wanted to do kind of like a mail day-ish month video of some things I've been buying lately. This is nothing high-end, of course. There's nothing really too exciting here going on. These boxes actually came from the Target drop that happened in mid-June. A couple days after mid-June. The recent drop that just happened, what would that be now? four or five days ago, ended up scoring nine more Megas and then nine more Blasters. Got some Cellos, no big deal on the Cellos because those are still up on the Target website right now. You used to be able to, if you had a red card, you could obviously add somebody else onto it. And you used to be able to get two orders of whatever it was for one household or you could do something where you could kind of modify the address so let's say you lived at apartment one two three you could put apartment one two three a or you could put unit one two three or number one two three you can find variations and you would be able to get through on target and do multiple orders target they don't allow that anymore <laughs> so on a couple of my accounts, I had the Megas canceled. Blasters didn't really try for those. So I've got nine Megas, nine Blasters on the way. I've got three Megas and nine Blasters total. So I'm flush with this stuff. I did get some Cellos. I think I have like 12 on the way. As I said, I ended up having six Megas get canceled. So I could have had more. What am I supposed to do? I don't know. But anyway, let's get into this mail day. A lot of this stuff is going to come from breaks I did. These next few things. This lot here is actually a 2021 Bowman Camo lot. There was only one particular player in here that I was really chasing. He's an individual that I bought a lot of lately. I should grab those cards and show you real quick. We'll flip through here real quick. But there's a lot of other good players that were in this lot. So I'll just run through these real quick. Alcantara. See Jake Vogel. Yolbert. McGable. Arias. Yeah, several of these guys are putting up good numbers. Nick Maton. There were several of him. This is the guy I was chasing right here, Jeremy De La Rosa. I picked up a lot of his Chrome rookies lately. He had Severino in there as well. And Jared Kelly. He's not doing too shabby either. Let me grab something real quick. Hold on. So two huge lots I picked up. They weren't that cheap either. It's Jose Salas. I ended up getting a lot of his. I think there were about 60 of his Chrome firsts in there. And I think the lot was right around $60, $63 or so. These came from the same seller. He was selling some other lots. He had a Volpe lot. He had one other one. This happened a few weeks ago, so I can't really recall who it was that I ended up just missing out on. I ended up with these two, so I was really happy. I'm not going to show you all the De La Rosas. You get the point. He's a guy that really struggled last year, but has really come on this year. I ended up picking up 177 of his Chrome Firsts. And I want to say I paid about $110 or so. It's actually pretty close to my max. So in terms of the max snipe that I set, so I wasn't even sure I was going to be able to win it. 
Definitely glad I did. I think I might have had the max at like 120 or something like that. I've been going back and grabbing some other Chrome as well from 2021, some Jake Fox, Kyle Manzardo, Cooper Kenny, Hunter Goodman. He's actually not doing too bad. He was a guy that I really overlooked. Obviously, that doesn't mean that he's going to amount to anything. But the guy I tried to grab some of, but there aren't too many of him out there. John Rhodes was another guy. I picked up a bunch of his refractors, and I've got a bunch of other chrome and refractors from that year on the way. Denzel Clark was one. Ah, there's a couple others. Ah, I can't recall. All right, so what I did was I ended up entering a break with Hobby Legends. I've talked about him numerous times. I only ended up getting... One player, Zayed Salinas, apparently AKA Ruben Salinas now. So I hadn't even opened these to see what was in there. I didn't get a chance to really check the breakout. I, I checked out one of the recaps at the end of the video. So we got the Lava to 399. I saw this one, this blue shimmer to 150. It looks like there's an atomic in the middle here. So this is one of the not numbered versions, but still gotta love those cards, sexy. He's 19. He just started playing in their rookie affiliate. Just started playing the past month or so. So off to a decent start. But like I was talking about with Extreme Card Breaks and other individuals, I generally don't buy the high-end players in breaks because the financial value isn't there. I mean, sure, I guess you can hit a home run. These were player breaks I bought into. I bought eight different tops player breaks. So these were all the numbered or foil or special cards that came out of there. Special? What am I talking about? I haven't even opened these yet, so he and his assistants always top load the good stuff. So let me go ahead and open these real quick, and then I'll show you what I got. Again, nothing high-end here, player-wise. And there were really only two players that I was chasing. A little something he does here. He puts a wrapper in with this. I didn't know what he was doing in terms of that until I actually saw... And talk about it on the video recap and he'll put that wrapper in there if the card is damaged and this Glenn Auto, I don't know if you're going to be able to pick it up here oh yeah you can pick it up look at that corner that corner is beat to hell obviously not his fault they come out that way but he'll put a wrapper in there so you can send it off to tops if you wanted to try to get a replacement of course tops requires a receipt and a UPC and all of that other stuff. So the wrapper helps, but if you don't have those other things, then you may be out of luck. So there's quite a few pitchers in here. There were just a few players that I was really trying to get. A lot of these other guys were just like low end dumpster buys. So it was at a Glen Auto foil. And then we've got an auto gold 2022. Another gold, not number, that's a gold foil. A Brule gold foil. Ah, the black version. It's numbered to 71. And an Austin Warren. We call that the speckle, I believe, to 499. Got a gold foil. And you can obviously go buy these on your own here. We got a gold numbered. I like the gold foil better. Uh, not numbered, of course. Got a to 299. We got an orange. Oh yeah, you can obviously go buy these on your own. But the price I paid for these guys, not really that great. Uh, okay, so these are two guys here that I was going after. Nothing super high end. Pozos in AAA right now. I only ended up pulling one parallel of his to 199. And Peyton Henry, gold to 2022. So it's funny, you'll see several of these players hit on a bunch of parallels, and some will only hit one. So here comes an example. Okay, this was the one guy I was after. There was one other pitcher that I was after. I struck out on him twice in his breaks. So uh, we'll see. So if that's the third insert, then we got a gold four, five, it's like a mojo or a silver pack. And then we actually got a rookie variation. This is the base here. And then this is the variation, short print card. So like I said, I kind of stick with the low end stuff. It's nice to see some 
interesting things show up in the mail, especially when you don't have a chance to fully watch the break. There's one other break of his that I got into, and this was actually weeks before that one. And I haven't had a chance to look at these either. I think I may have had less players in this particular break. But we'll wrap it up here for this video. Then I'm going to shoot a second part of this to show you some other stuff I've been buying. It's tons. And it's going to take a few minutes. So I don't want to make this video too long. Feltner. Gold. Come on, look at those gold foils versus just the gold. Aren't those gold foils a lot sexier? So Feltner. Pozo. Again, he's in AAA for the Rangers right now. He's doing pretty well. So we got, whoa, we actually hit three gold cards. Yeah, so sometimes it's like that, I guess. You hit a hot case or not. And then Peyton Henry once again. So you see a little bit of a trend with these guys. Again, these are guys that haven't established themselves. Peyton Henry has some time in the show. So we got the gold foil, a couple foils, uh, rainbow foils, I should say, and then the gold. So that's pretty much it for there. What I was talking about with Extreme, what I like to do and talking about in the Discord is when it comes to lower end guys where, and you have to keep in mind, you're getting base rookies as well with all of this. You have to kind of look at where you can find value if there are decent enough players that you want to chase. So for instance, with this particular breaker, he did a 15 case break. So in addition to these parallels that come with these players, you'd be looking at a base count of anywhere between 85 to 90 rookies. Now, if you're talking about paying 10, 15 bucks for a player, then that's decent enough value. It's speculative, of course, but you're not breaking the bank. Obviously, for the Contreras, I paid a bit more, and the Poza was a bit more because those guys are a little bit more desirable or sought after that's how i do my thing so that's the point of talking about this stuff in the video is when it comes to breaks i don't go after the high-end guys because people really overpay for those guys in my opinion they go way beyond because they're trying to hit that home run trying to get that lottery ticket like i've been talking about with extreme car breaks lately whereas me i focus on more value plays you know, there's a lot more potential with the high-end guys, of course. They're expensive for a reason. If I want cards of those guys, I'll just chase the singles or lots. It's different, obviously, because you can't hit the huge home run, that big auto or that numbered to five or numbered to 10 or 15 card that people are trying to chase, the lottery ticket, as I said. But for me, that's just kind of how I do my thing. My investment is I'll look for value with some of the lower end guys that I like that I think have potential and then when it comes to the higher end guys then I'll just go ahead and chase singles chase numbered stuff if I want to that's how I do my thing just a little insight right there a little HCI insider tip <laughs> and not even so much a tip just kind of like how I do my thing so all right happy fourth everybody get on with it thanks for watching I gotta go shoot a second part to this video take care everyone be safe out there alcohol in moderation